Chapter 4 The duck and the dog get up and elect to tell Sora their tragic backstory. The two of them come from a faraway world called Disney World. It is a nice and peaceful kingdom, and you can expect a beautiful and relaxing life if you live within the sugar-tainted walls. One such resident is Donald Duck, the kingdom's court wizard and the most magically gifted bird you will ever dare to lay your mortal eyes on. On this morning, Donald is making his usual rounds, preparing to visit his most favorite king, Mickey the Mouse. Donald thrusts open the golden doors to Mickey's chamber of delusions and basks within its heavenly glow. Good morning, your majesty. I hope you're having a wonderful morning this morning. But gasp! The king is nowhere to be seen. The only thing in this room is a sad empty throne, pitifully lacking a mouse's butt cheeks to keep it warm. What a conundrum. What a conundrum indeed. Donald is not quite sure what to make of this situation and turns to exit the throne room, but he finds his path is blocked by Mickey's dog servant, Plutonimo. The look on the dog servant's face shows that it must have something very important to tell us. It shuffles its pathetically stumpy legs up to Donald and flails about its terrible, grotesque arms, while muttering noises that only the criminally insane would be able to comprehend. What a wretched creature! How dare this thing address the almighty Donald in a manner such as this? He half considers incinerating the dog servant right there on the spot with fire magic, but manages to restrain himself when he spots a royal envelope, clutched within the creature's mangled claw. Donald takes the envelope into his hands and scans it with his all-knowing gaze. The envelope is adorned with King's very own royal seal, which in reality is actually just a picture of Mickey's head. You see, Mickey is the kind of guy that likes to plaster his face onto the surface of everything he owns, just so you know exactly who's in charge. I mean, seriously, who's gonna go around committing crimes when your king's face is constantly staring at you from, like, 20 different directions? Anyway, Donald decides to open up the letter and proceeds to read its contents. Dear Donald, I've got some shit to do, so I'm going to be gone for a while. Take care of the kingdom for me while I'm gone, and make sure Plutonimo doesn't crap on the floor again. Best of luck, your friend, King Mickey Mouse. P.S. If you see a guy running around with the giant key, then he's probably the legendary savior of the universe. So, you know, watch out for that. Donald is outright flabbergasted, as he cannot believe what he has just read. He stares blankly down at the paper, his hands trembling like a dishwasher full of angry bees. What the hell is this crap? Mickey is gone? You mean he just straight up left in the middle of the night like that? What the freaking balls, man? Who does that? I thought you were supposed to be a freaking king. You can't just bail on your entire kingdom like that. What kind of circus do you think you're running here? Jesus freaking Christ. Holy shit. At this point, Donald has built up enough rage that you could probably bottle it and sell it to some kind of anger collection agency. You see, Donald is normally a pretty lax fellow. The kind of guy that you could enjoy a nice game of cribbage with. But he simply cannot and will not put up with Mickey's stupid bullshit. 
Not today, not ever. Donald realizes that he has no choice. He must go out there and he must hunt down the king, dragging him back to the castle by force if necessary. The plan is set, but it will not be an easy task. Mickey could be anywhere in the galaxy at this point. Donald knows that he cannot make this journey alone. He needs the assistance of an old friend. Across the hills, in the distant outskirts of Disney World, rests a humble cottage. This is the home of Goofy, the oldest and wisest sage in all the lands. He is a man of great knowledge and power, and when he opens his mouth to speak, you damn well better lend an ear and listen, because you can bet that you're going to hear some great eldritch knowledge that will probably change the way you perceive reality itself. Goofy is clearly the only person that Donald can trust with a mission of this magnitude. With his infinite wisdom and superior bloodhound genes, Goofy is the perfect candidate to help Donald track down the king. And being the benevolent, adventure-loving guy that he is, Goofy gladly agrees to accompany Donald on his quest. Now that the path is set, Donald and Goofy decide to go looking for the only lead that they have, that mysterious key person mentioned in the letter. Goofy does not know about such things, but he has an idea of where to look. The town where all journeys start, and where quest hooks become actual regular quests. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Set destination to Transverse Town. 